All right, so we've got STL up and running with our Chip 8 interpreter, and the next step is going to be figuring out how to display an image in the STL window and get it so that that image is based on the contents of our display array here. I already have some ideas about how this display array is going to cause some problems, but we'll worry about that when we get there. I think the first step is to figure out again how to render an image in SDL. And I know we had some of this already loaded up in the last video, but we're going to now go and actually complete this. So we've created the window, that looks good. We could do some error checking, I'm not going to worry about that for now. And then we're going to create a render for the window, so this looks like a good next step. So let's try that out next. Uh, bar render equals sdl.sdl create render. And we're going to pass it the window. Uh, it looks like index can be negative one. And we're going to get an accelerated window. That sounds great. And what is this actually returning? It's returning some sort of pointer again. So we'll put its type there. And then. Uh, if render uh, equals, equals zero, then we'll console.write line SDL could not create a valid render. And we'll return from that. Really, I should check to see if the window is also equal to zero. Could not create a window. And it's not equal to zero, it's equal to int pointer. Zero. Two different things. Okay, so now we've created a render, uh, initialize the render color, and then we need to initialize an image. Okay, that sounds good. And then this part here is loading a texture. SDL could not initialize the SDL image, okay. So I don't really want to load a texture. What I actually want to do is I want to create a texture using the uh, display array that I have in memory. So let's see if I can find an example of that. Uh, render texture from memory, SDL. Let's see. So this person's creating window, creating a render, setting the output size, and then they're creating an RGB surface from some memory, creating a texture from that surface, rendering that, presenting it, waiting a bit. Okay, this looks pretty reasonable. I have a few assumptions. You see recording codebase from DDraw. Okay, so it looks like they're close to making this work, and I think we can get it the rest of the way. We've already created the render, and now we want to create this surface. So let's do that next. SDL surface is equal to SDL dot SDL create RGB surface from, and then we pass it pixels. That's cool and then the width, height, everything like that. So this is something we'll have to do every single loop, I think. So we're going to have to put this inside our main loop here. And then we're going to have to use our display. CPU display and the int pointer of that, which means that we have to somehow get a handle to that, and I think that the Marshall stuff can do that, right? Uh, system runtime interrupt surface, so Marshall dot, and this is, uh, this is going way back. Let's see here, I, I seem to remember you have to, you have to get like a garbage collector handle or something, is it GC alloc? C dot. I thought it was simple GC alloc. No, not quite right. Let's see. It. We, we need to pin array in memory. I 
think, in C sharp. Pinning an array. GC handle dot alloc. So close, but not quite there. GC handle dot alloc. Cool. So what we'll do is we're going to take that CPU.display and then we're going to pin it in memory and that returns a GC handle. And then what we have to remember to do, uh, we can use that display handle now and address of the pinned object. So there's our int pointer and then the width was 64, the height is 32, the depth is 8 bits. Let me just make sure I'm using this thing properly. Create surface from. That is very low documentation. Um. <laughs> sure. It's just not telling me at all what any of these things really mean. Like, what does pitch mean? Is that the distance between? Uh, pixels, and then red mask, green mask, blue mask, alpha mask, we don't have any of that kind of stuff. So we'll just, we'll just go for it, see how it goes. And then, it's like, is that in bytes or is that in bits? Let's go back to our example and uh, see if they had any of that in there. Zero, 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 zero. Huh. The RGB surface from. Okay, well let's let's just try it with zeros to start. One, two, three, four, five, six zeros in there, and they had one, two, three, four of them. 32 and 640. 640-0, So they had some strange values in there for depth and pitch. But we'll, we'll just give this a try, see how it goes. So now we want to create a texture from that surface. I dream too much. I tell Texture, create texture from surface. Now we can toss it the render itself and then the surface. STL surface. And then we'll call render copy to the render texture. And then zero and zero. Present that render, and then at the end of this, since we're creating textures and surfaces each time, we probably want to destroy them. So what I'll do is I'll actually create an int pointer, SDL surface, and SDL texture, and then if SDL texture does not equal zero. We'll call SDL dot destroy texture on that. And if my surface does not equal zero, then we'll call SDL dot destroy surface. Nope, there is no destroy surface. So we don't have to do anything there. So this is going to destroy the texture every time. And then once we're done creating this texture, we should go and uh, remove that GC handle. And I think it's actually a method in display handle, isn't it? So we'll free that. Okay. Let's see what happens here. Not a lot yet. It's, it's showing up as black, which is kind of nice, but we don't see any white pixels. 
So I have a couple theories here about what could be going on. The first is that that display array is only a single byte. And if this is truly looking for RGBA values, then we probably want them to be four bytes, 32 bits. And so we can look into expanding display to be 32 bits per pixel. So let's go down that path first. So to do that, I'm going to have to change how CPU display works. Now let's see, what am I doing right now? I'm setting display equals to one. It'd be kind of nice if I could set the pixel format easily. I bet there's a way to do it. I just don't uh, don't know off the top of my head. Let's see, so I could go and change this display array to be integers. You can make it uint, and everything's still happy. The only thing I'm going to change here is that I'm going to change this from a 1 to does not equal 0, does not equal 0, and then instead of doing the XOR of this thing, I want to expand this to be uh, all Fs. I think the easiest way to do that, let's say display index does not equal zero, and then pixel equals one, or display index equals zero, and then pixel equals one. Then it's going to be OX FF 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 FF, otherwise zero. Okay, so this is basically implementing the XOR. So if display is effectively one and pixel zero, then it will keep it. If display index is zero and pixel is one, then it will keep it. Otherwise, it will be zero. So this should kind of be the same thing. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so everything's still kind of working here in the console. Still can't see anything quite here. Let's see if we can fix up this code for creating the RGB surface. I'm sure depth is going to be how many bytes per pixel. Let's just try again to find some documentation on this thing. Maybe somebody's got an example of it being used. So here we go. This is using pixels width, height, and 32. So it looks like it is using number of bits. Let's try that out, and then the pitch between them. I wonder, okay, so this is the actual width, so 64 times four, and then the red mask, green mask, blue mask, and alpha mask. And it looks like they had those filled in here, and I think I can use those same values. Put them all on the same line. Okay, that looks more reasonable to me. And in fact, it looks more reasonable to SDL too. That's pretty cool. Okay, so I've got some sort of drawing issue here. It's not actually erasing the old data, but still pretty slick. Um, not sure what to do, why it's, why it's not erasing the old data. Let's see here, is it because 
I need to do an SDL clear here. I bet there's something like that. Let's uh, let's remove this read key so that my program actually terminates. And we're so close, I wanna finish here. Is there just a clear, render clear? Let's give that a try. That's looking pretty sweet. Awesome, so what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to uh, remove the console drawing here and then put the delay between frames uh, here, I guess, in my render code. So let's give that a try quickly. So I don't need any of this console stuff anymore. But setting the display dirty would still be kind of nice. Well, let's just see how this goes. So let's uh, sleep between every time we show a frame here. There we go, we've, we've got Pong playing in SDL. And I imagine I can resize this thing. Yeah, that works pretty well. Let's just see what other games look like now really quick. So that's Pong 2. Let's go back to, uh, let's try out that Heartbeat one again because that was pretty neat. Heart monitor. Awesome. All right, I'm pretty happy with the progress we made in this video. So I'm gonna stop it for now and next time what are we going to do next time? We're probably going to start uh, figuring out keyboard input and then see if we can figure out a better way to optimize some of this drawing because we shouldn't be redrawing it every single program instruction. So we'll, we'll figure something out there. Until next time.